Hi there, this is Christian Homan with an explanation about the undesirable defect or UDs as used in the thinking processes or logical thinking process. The very name undesirable effect should be self-explanatory, but experience showed that a more specific definition is needed. In the early times of the thinking processes, undesirable effects were loosely defined as anything you don't like, with the intent, I presume, to have as many symptoms of a problem described during an interview and allowing analysts to build a current reality tree and dig from the undesirable effect down to their critical root causes. Yet, this loose definition led people to complain about too many things they didn't like and the flood analysts with UDs they struggled to make a sense of. All too often, what was presented as undesirable effect was simply a matter of personal preferences and not a real problem or issue. Bill Detmer, my mentor and friend, soon realized that in order to qualify as undesirable effect, the supposed UD has to be undesirable for the system as a whole. In other words, an undesirable effect is harming the system, like preventing from achieving its goals or limiting its performances. For instance, if I'm hired to a new company and I do not like the color of the office walls, the system, here the company, doesn't care. Me not liking the color does hopefully not harm the company, neither will it prevent from achieving its goal. Once the need for a more specific definition of undesirable effect was recognized, a list of requirements for qualifying as UD was set up. In the Theory of Constraints Handbook published by McGraw Hill in 2010, page 697, you can find a definition and guidelines about UDs. Here they are. Let me share my understanding and comments about them. Effect and the existence being indisputable means that the UD is recognized, acknowledged within the organization. It is nothing that will be denied by part of the staff. And it qualifies as undesirable because it is also acknowledged to endanger, reduce or prohibit achieving a valid need, objective or even the goal of the system. System means organization, enterprise, company, and so on. Further, we can read that a UD is a complaint about an ongoing problem that exists in reality. Ongoing and existing are important in order not to lose time trying to solve past problems or problems that appear from time to time or only in very specific circumstances. Yet here a side note. The analyst must judge if a problem appearing in periodic bursts or in specific circumstances is worth investigating or not. Do not stick too rigidly to the definition. Insisting on UD existence is also a way to filter out speculation and focus on the real phenomena. We are not dealing with risk mitigation here, we are in a real problem-solving process. It should be written in present tense. This is an easy trick to check if the situation described is still actual, if people still agree on it, especially when put into a current reality tree and searching for causes. It should be a complete sentence. This is for the sake of clarity. For instance, if someone states that products are damaged, does it mean they are crushed, burnt, scratched, all of them, every time, always, and so on. It's a description of a state, not an action. In case of an action, the outcome isn't certain as long as it is not completed. If the action is to be repeated, will it lead to the same state? Will it be done the exact same way? Within your area of responsibility, here the analyst wants to restrict the list of claims to issues that can be solved because the UD and presumably the cause lay within the span of control or at least the sphere of influence of the people dealing with the UD. If not, it may be a constraint related to regulation or a fact of life nobody can act upon like the sun is shining too bright, which led to the reinforcement stated as something can be done about it. It must not blame someone, as it would otherwise be the best way to start a fight or move on to the emotional ground. It must not be a speculated cause. Okay, we mentioned it earlier. 
It must not be a hidden solution to the problem, or in other words, wishful thinking of solving the problem. Like for instance, the machine is too old, in poor shape, in hope for getting the investment for a new one. It should contain one entity. This is a basic rule about entity statements, meaning always separating statements in distinct entities. For instance, the UD stated the packagings are dirty and client returned the goods contain two distinct statements that may not necessarily have the same causes. As goods can be returned for another reason than dirty packages, and all dirty packages do not always lead to goods being returned. In order to solve the problems, we need to separate the two outcomes and investigate their own causes. Maybe in the end there will be a common cause, but we cannot be sure from the start. It should not include its cause in its verbalization. If I take the same example, we cannot say the UD as client returned the goods because the packaging is dirty. It should be factual and not subjective. Again, we try to avoid speculation and want to work on real and fact-based problems. As you can see, undesirable effects have a more specific definition and list of requirements. Some people, especially when they explore the thinking processes by themselves and they come across early papers, may still consider UDs as anything you don't like. But because you followed the explanation till this point, you are now aware that a new D must be stated according to rules in order to qualify as such. Investing time and properly state, rephrase and refine the UDs can save a lot of time and avoid misunderstandings later in the analysis process. I do hope you have found value and interest in this video. If so, give me an encouraging uh, thumbs up and share it. Until next time.